Oh my goodness, trees. It's no secret if you've been around my channel long, you know I love to paint trees. Why, you may ask? So many reasons. So many magical reasons. We're going to look at some of those today. And of course, I'm going to paint a tree. And to me, a very interesting tree. So many reasons. Well, I mean, what can I say about trees? So much, actually. So, so much I can't uh, usually even figure out how to put it all in, all in words. I really do love trees that much. It, it's just that there's so much character, and there are so many different ways trees can look. So many different personalities. But look, before I get into that, I just want to tell you what I'm using here. I'm actually sketching with gouache. No particular reason other than I had this palette here of gouache left over from the Daniel Smith review that I did. And I'm just wanting to use it up. Now, as a side note, what you may find interesting is that I use gouache here just exactly like transparent watercolor. There's very little opaque gouache. And again, uh, this just kind of goes to what I've said before. Gouache is watercolor. I mean, it is. You can use it like watercolor. Another thing I do like about sketching with gouache is that it sits a little bit more on top of the paper. So after it's dry, it's a little bit easier to blend and lift. Now, granted, you can't add a lot of layers and opacity builds up much quicker, but in thin washes, it still looks pretty transparent. So all of that's just an aside. Yeah, so sketching here in wash, beginning with a water brush to sketch out the tree, and then you'll see me switch later to a round, a trachel, number four round, long round. But trees, man, I tell you what, I just have seen some amazing things that artists have done with trees. What I find funny is how so many YouTube videos and so many artists treat trees so generically, like a crowd of people in the background. Now, you need those kind of trees in your paintings, I, I admit. But if you're not exploring the magic of the way tree trunks and limbs and roots and the way the trees spread their branches, you're just really missing a whole lot when it comes to trees. There's a reason why there are so many artists, so many moods in cinema, so many pictures, so many feelings and vibes can be created by trees. I mean, even going to the fantastical, trees are just, just great. Well, in this study, I was just adding to a spread that I did, um, was this a couple of years ago, maybe? My wife and I went to Charleston to Magnolia Plantation. And there's a video, I'll put a link to it down in the description, where I did a plein air of a large oak tree. These are actually called live oaks. And down in the South Carolina Low Country, that's down near the coast, you'll see a lot of these. These live oaks have big spreading branches, huge trunks. Many of them are hundreds of years old. A lot of them have ferns growing on them called resurrection ferns. And if there were any trees that were magical, <laughs> these are. So all I'm doing here is I decided to add this tree over on the side spread or the side page uh, to the plein air one that I did at Magnolia Plantation. And this is actually from another photo that I took at Magnolia Plantation. So when you start thinking about trees in this way, one thing that happens is that you just start looking all the time for those unique ones, and they're out there. And they become uh, like subjects that you want to paint in a portrait and draw, and the variety is just absolutely endless. Not only a species variety, but within a species, just the ways they can look, just the way they can fill you with that ambiance and character. What would landscape be <laughs> without trees, right? Well, if I could do anything in this video, it's just to urge you to start looking. Let your eyes go to those unique 
trees, the ones with the really cool looking bark and limbs, and the ones that catch the light in fantastic ways, the ones that inspire the faces in fantasy, or the dark moods, or the happy, peaceful moods. To get back to this painting, most of this was painted in grays. The grays were mixed, although I did use some Jane's gray, some Daniel Smith Jane's gray, which is a transparent watercolor. I used that and I mixed it with ultramarine blue, some burnt sienna. So yeah, the greens were spring green, Hansa yellow light. Again, muted with the grays I was mixing using Jane's gray. But largely, as you can see here, it was gray tones and towards the end you'll see I glazed in light bits of color here and there over the grays and I even varied the grays as I was painting them so that they would bend towards the cool they would bend towards the warm just to give them some life and that pretty much worked you know with a one or two layer at the most glaze pretty much worked the same as transparent watercolor First. You don't always need to be worried about colors being so transparent all the time. I love them. I swear by them. I love transparent colors. But there's a lot of latitude in how you can use watercolor.
thanks everyone for watching and thank you so much patrons for supporting this channel and check out some of these other videos that i've got going see you in the next video bye, -bye.